you know, there's a lot of discussion around mindfulness and meditation and consciousness and look, I'm not here to rewrite any definition and I'm not even sure what the, the Webster's Dictionary version is. But to me, meditation is a practice that can be considered spiritual, whereby you focus your mind continually on whether it be a, a sensation or a mantra over an extended period of time in a way that really just frees the body up to release all of the tension and the energy that's being held and stored inside. Um, so to me, the definition of meditation is you know, engaging in a practice that builds the ability to focus on something that allows the body to resolve tension, uh, resolve emotions, and um, yeah, create a, a greater state of homeostasis. When you understand, I guess, the, the neurological and the biological and the neurochemical impacts of meditation, you start to understand why you are able to sleep better. I sleep better. Uh, I think better. My recall and my memory are off the charts. My ability to drop into flow is, in most cases, unmatched by most people in my field. My ability to feel empathy, you know, my ability to connect with my body and actually listen to my intuition. Because a lot of people, you know, the seat of intuition is in our body. You know, it's not in the brain. The seat of intuition is in our heart. It's being sent to every organ in our body and also the brain. And the brain is the intellectual interpreter of that, of that information. And what happens in the brain is the brain literally starts to create a greater level of harmony. You know, it, it almost has many, it has, you know, meditation has many psychedelic properties whereby it starts to get neurons that haven't communicated connecting and communicating. And when that happens, like there's all sorts of biological, neurological, ne biochemical and neurochemical responses that happen. As a result, cortisol drops, DHEA rises, growth hormone rises, hormone levels you know, either elevate or balance and harmonize. Um, and, and the list goes on. Immune function raises, IQ raises. There is so many fucking benefits of meditation that, and the best part is, it's free. <laughs> but there's that many apps now that you can either download for free or otherwise, um, or read a book and just work it out. The shit's free. It has anti-aging properties. People who meditate for three years, on average, lower their cellular age by between five to seven years. So if you can meditate consistently for three years, three years from now, you'll actually be four years younger, biologically. <laughs> It's nuts. And it only takes four days of meditation for there to be a significant, measurable improvement in performance. Not mild, not moderate, not anecdotal, significant and measurable. Four days. And that's what I, I laugh when people say, oh, I'm not really, my mind isn't, you know, my mind isn't built to meditate. Why? It's just, well, it's really busy. It's like, meditation was built for you. It's not like Cinderella's shoes that only fits certain people. It fits everybody. But most people's feet are fucking swollen from you know, bad habits, bad thinking. And so when they put those shoes on for the first time, there's blisters, it's annoying, it's painful, it's uncomfortable. They walk 10 meters and it hurts. You know, but once you get your mind and your body healthy, you can walk 20 meters. And then a week later, you can work 30 meters and 40 meters. And two weeks later, you can run a fucking marathon in those same shoes that annoyed the shit out of you when you first put them on. And see, and that's why I think meditation is so important to be introduced as early as possible because in many ways it is an incredibly powerful yet gentle way to introduce resilience and grit because in many respects what is required in to be able to meditate or maintain a high level of practice is that commitment and consistency to push through the discomfort the reason people don't like to meditate is it's not fucking comfortable to sit in your own shit you know, it's not comfortable to sit there and go, okay, don't think about anything, don't think about anything. I oh, fuck, I've got to make a car payment. My husband called me, there's a prick this morning. Like, whatever. And all of a sudden, all the shit pops in and go, this is horrible. I don't want to do this. I don't want to sit in my stew of shit. And it's like, well, no, what you've got to understand is you need to sit, in, you need to simmer for a little bit in order for them to reduce. Does that make sense? So you might be sitting in a world of fucking stew, a shit stew when you first start, but what's going to happen is you let that simmer and it's going to reduce and there's gonna be less shit, and less shit, and less shit. And you know, so people say, oh, your meditations must be amazing now. Okay, so I'm, I'm having some of my toughest, I've been meditating for like 20 odd years, and I'm, I am still having some of my toughest meditations. You get the meditation you need, not the meditation that you want. For me, the biggest misconception is, 
meditation isn't is meditation isn't for everyone and it fucking well is it's like good nutrition isn't for everyone it, it bloody well is good nutrition saves lives meditation saves lives it saves marriages it saves businesses it you know it has huge ramifications and so yeah i think that's probably one of the biggest biggest myth myth and to people who are skeptical of meditation i'd say just go and look at the research you can't argue with the science you can't you know one of the I'm not sure if he's still the chair, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, maybe we'll pop it up here. But one of the guys who's the chairman for the International Federation for Transcendental Meditation is actually one of the world's top renowned physicists. And when you hear him define and explain all the science, skeptic what? You're not a skeptic, you're septic bro. Because your thinking is tainted, you know? And if you're someone that requires facts, the data's there. If you're someone that doesn't require facts, you're more experiential, then practice. But what I will say is, anyone who practices for long enough will become convinced. The question is, is how important is that is your conviction once it's been achieved? It's a matter of prioritizing values. And for anyone that understands the value in meditation, but you're not practicing meditation, then you've got to start connecting the benefits of meditation to the things that are actually important to you. And so for me, it's like, what's important in your life? Family, okay. And riddle me this, Batman. Give me 500 reasons why meditation will make you a better mother, father, brother, sister, auntie, husband, wife, parent, you know, spouse, all of the above, because it will. For me, I, I, I compulsively want to meditate because I have attached it consciously and unconsciously to so many aspects of my life, to parenting, to speaking, to high function neurological, high, high neurological function, to flow state, you know, to communication, to uh, energy, to immunity. Like there are so many things that I go, fuck, tick, 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 tick. I can't not. And then you go and you sit down and you have one meditation and you're like, it's like going to the gym for the first time in two weeks, like fuck, I needed that. And you go, baby, I'm back. Why would I give this up?